What, for you and me? There's not enough. A thousand pounds for the man who brings me on! This is not gonna end well. No, I didn't want much from this film. I just wanted somewhat of a decent story with some cool shots of bow and arrow action, and that's it. Well, did the film deliver? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Robin Hood. I really do appreciate it. Now, I'm serious with what I said in my intro. Um, this film right here is directed by someone I've never heard of before by the name of Otto Bathurst or Bathurst. Um, when you look at his filmography, he does not have any experience other than a few uh, TV directing jobs and some couple of short stares. So this is his first uh, full length feature. And to be honest with it, or to be honest with you, excuse me, it shows. Now, the first thing about this film, well, let me just go ahead and say this. I didn't enjoy this movie. Um, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't like a dumpster fire like some people are describing it. I believe last time I checked, it had like a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, so it just wasn't just trash, but I didn't enjoy it either. I'm, I'm not going to recommend this film. Well, why, why is that, Brandon? Here's why. Well, first of all, most people know the story of Robin Hood. It takes place in the 16th century. And, you know, he's a, he's a uh, an outlaw. He's a, a vigilante. He robs from the rich and steals from the poor. There's been many, many iterations of Robin Hood over the past 100 years, and this is the latest incarnation of it. But the film assumes that you already know the story of Robin Hood. And like what the description I just gave you, that's pretty much all I know. But it decides to skip over that whole narration or that whole uh, plot synopsis as they're narrating and just leaves it up to you to figure out everything. I mean, it's pretty lazy. It comes on just like, you know, hey, if you know the story of Robin Hood, just forget it because we're going to tell you a new story, but we're not going to tell you the story. You're just going to have to kind of figure it out for yourself. I'm like, OK, I kind of wish you would have reminded me of the story of Robin Hood, maybe give me a little backstory that I've never heard before, especially since the last Robin Hood film that was directed by Ridley Scott that came out in 2010, which I believe starred. Uh, what's his name? Russell Crowe, uh, you know, the guy that we all know from um, from Gladiator. I'm, I'm not going to look that up or whatever, but uh, that film wasn't that good. It, it didn't do well financially. It wasn't, re you know, received well critically. It just was not a great film. So, I mean, eight years later, you're making another Robin Hood film and you're assuming that everybody in the world or this country in the States, you know, just in love with the uh, with the IP. That's just a big mistake right there. And initially just kind of clocked me out. Uh, my next gripe about this film was the editing. While the cinematography and all that was is fine, and I, I like the look and the feel of the film, um, it clocked me in and out with the editing sometimes. Because when there were some hand-to-hand -hand fights up close, I like the camera to be pulled back just a little bit so I can actually see what's going on and comprehend the choreography. I was not able to do that in this film right here. Oh. Um, also, um, there was a love story between, of course, um, Robin Hood, Robin of Loxley, and Maid Marian, who pretty much just goes by Marian in this movie as well. Uh, that love is not earned either i mean we just don't know anything about their relationship we're just supposed to assume that they're in love and again this is this film is is, is just lazy you know assuming that you know all the material from the past and that's just something that i did not like my biggest gripe about this whole movie comes down to the score and to the soundtrack i love a good score i love a good soundtrack if it's used properly and i've never in my entire life seen a misuse of music composition in the film ever like this before at times to where you're supposed to be sad and it's supposed to be a dramatic scene and you're supposed to feel all the emotions on the character on screen they have the completely wrong tone of music like we're about to go on a battle i'm like no this is a sad scene a daunting scene this is not music to where you know this is a charge on the front line in the middle of a war in an open field or something like that it doesn't make any sense so just imagine like any type of uh uh, material that you like and you know they're tr like a training montage you know they're getting ready to go on a battle you know do a doom doom to doom do a doom doom as batman is putting on his clothes do a doom doom to doom doom do a doom i mean it's that type of music is supposed to get you pumped 
They are playing this type of music when people are dying and crying and suffering and in pain and, and can't pee straight and they have no food to eat. I'm just like, what is going on here? I'm like, this is just weird. I, I, it was an experience that I've never had before. So now let's go over to some of the actors. Okay. Taryn Edgerton, Taryn Edgerton who was in the, um, the, um, Secret Service movies. I like those. I, I like part two as well. Not as much as part one, but I liked it. He's fine in this movie. He's not great. He's not horrible. But Jamie Foxx, I don't know what the hell the director was thinking when they had Jamie Foxx in this movie. Or the, I, I blame all this on the directing. Jamie Foxx played like three different characters in this movie. I, I, some type of personality disorder. I thought he was related to um, James McAvoy in the uh, movie that's about to come out, Glass, and all that good stuff. I, I don't understand where it's coming from. I think they were trying to portray Jamie Foxx as like a Moor, or you know, they had some Moorish content in here, which was a little interesting and 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 weird on top of them. But Jamie Foxx, it's like the, the uh, uh, this is. I, I was actually thinking this when I was watching the movie that the director took Jamie Foxx over here, and then took Taron Egerton over here and when he told jamie fox okay hey jamie we're gonna you know he described the scene to jamie this is our one out the scene this is your lines of dialogue when i hit act when i say action go i want you to get it man you know use your stuff but then went over to taron edgerton and told him a completely different story like okay hey man right now this scene right here you're in space okay and you're trying to find milk for your dogs okay because if you don't find milk for your dogs they're gonna they're not gonna birth dogs they're gonna birth cats and that's weird especially in space this stupid random stuff and then decided to put these two actors together and play out a scene and then it's like not matching i'm like are y'all talking to each other it just doesn't make sense I and mean, imagine if somebody comes up to you and be like hey you know what hey what did you do yesterday and they reply back like i didn't like it you know when i bit into it it was hard i don't think the customers are gonna like this sample that we created for them no nah, man i asked what you did last night yeah you know uh i looked up in the sky and there was a rainbow and i was like okay if there's a rainbow it's not gonna last or forever it's gonna sometimes come down and then they reply like oh for real yeah well, when i got that red curtain there ross or whatever I, w I came home and picked it up i mean it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't match it, it, and that's exactly what these two characters was going through and then like when they introduced jamie fox they introduced him as somebody that was extremely vulnerable in a timid position and then the next time you see it he turns into some superhero with motivation that just came out, out of nowhere and I, i'm just sitting here just like flabbergasted like i don't know what the hell is going on i mean just i mean, like the way he talked it's like dude calm down like it is not this serious it was like or, or just give me another example of, of some dialogue right here just like okay hey man you know um we gotta have dinner tonight i heard you was preparing you know what are you gonna prepare how are you gonna do it i gotta go to the store and get some hot dogs okay why do you need to get some hot dogs because we already got the hot dog buns and we need some hot dogs to go with the hot dog buns okay what else is gonna go with the hot dog buns we're gonna get some chips ladies and doritos yeah god damn it I almost shit Oh, damn that throat jumped out my mouth down there exactly it just doesn't make any sense and that's what jamie fox's character is doing in here is little john and it just didn't make any sense to me as far as all the characters are concerned i didn't care about them at all whether they lived or survived it, it just really didn't matter to me um it really just felt like there was no stakes in the whole movie now one thing i will kind of say is i did kind of like the training montages with the bow and arrow and things like that that was pretty cool pretty nifty the way they did that you know i did like it it was entertaining but at the same time it was unearned it just came out of nowhere there was no build up to it you know i did not see taron edgerton as robin hood in a fallen broken place and you know he needed some type of uh, motivational uplift of empowerment to make him go on to the next job and then when little john and robin hood are completing this job there's no plan of action i mean it just cuts over in the middle of the action scene and i don't know the depth of it i don't know how hard or difficult this job was there wasn't like i said there was no plan in the beginning like, okay there's going to be 50 men or 100 men here we have to hit it at this point and this time here and if we miss this point right here we're going to miss our window da, 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 da. there was none of that it was just action 
action, action, action. I mean, imagine a movie that you like, you think it's okay. You like all the action scenes in it. And so when you rewatch it at home, you just kind of fast forward to all the good parts. That's kind of how this movie was. It was just nothing but the good parts, but the good parts had no weight to it because there was just no buildup. I mean, another way I can describe it is just like all the cut scenes in a video game or something like that edited together. Now, kind of towards the end, the third act, things did kind of pick up a little bit um, and, you know, it, it got better. Uh, but overall, this was a, a, a huge disappointment in a film that I will not recommend to anyone. Um, even though there were a few little elements here and there that I enjoyed. If I had to rate Robin Hood out of a 1 out of 10, I would give this film a 5 out of 10. Yes, a 5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion, okay? I mean, you may like the film. I didn't, okay? Do you want to see it or have you already seen it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also check me out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Robin Hood. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Heath Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.